my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny and welcome to the October Sew Along. Now for anyone um, that doesn't know, I do a monthly plans video and then I put those plans up to the vote to see uh, which one you guys would like to see as the Sew Along. So for October, there was the Nina Lee Southbank sweater, there was a new look uh, sort of tunic jersey top and there was the Tilly and the Buttons Juno pyjamas and the Tilly and the Buttons olive pinafore. So you guys voted. I had nearly 270 votes, which was amazing. So lovely that you guys all got involved in that. And the winner was the Tilly and the Buttons olive pinafore. And this comes from the Make It Simple book. So you can't buy the olive pinafore separately. Unfortunately, you do have to purchase the book to be able to get this pattern. And I will just show you uh, the dress here, which is beautifully modelled by Phoebe. Um, I follow her on Instagram and I think her Instagram handle is Phoebe Rosita, I think. I will link it down in the description box below in case you'd like to follow her. Um, but yes, that is the olive pinafore. And if I just show you the line drawings of that. So... You can see here that it is quite um, a standard fit kind of pinafore. It does kind of go in slightly at the waist, which is really nice. And I do love the fact that it's got these fisheye darts on the front and the back. Now, you may realise that I already have the pattern um, traced, well, I've traced it off um, already. Now, that's because I already have made this pattern before. I will insert a picture here of me wearing my first one, which was made in a lovely red needle cord. And I really like that. I've had quite a lot of wear out of that already. And I just think for kind of this autumn, winter transitional period, I think it will go so well um, with so many things. And I wanted to make myself another one. So I've already got the, as I say, I've already traced it out already. So you're not going to see me doing that. I usually do trace out the pattern. But I will go through what size I decided on and everything like that. Oh, so Tilly's patterns uh, come in a variety of sizing. Um, the book comes in sizes one to ten. And I'll just go through uh, what those measurements are for the olive. So size one, which is the smallest size, um, it's catered for a bust of 30 inches, a waist of 24 and hips 33. And then the uh, size 10, that caters for a bust of 48 inches, a waist of 42 inches and hips of 51 inches. Now, usually in Tilly, put uh, Tilly Puttons, Tilly Patterns, um, I come up as a size 4 because a size 4 is catered for a 36 bust a 30 waist and a 39 hip. My measurements are 36 bust, 30 waist and a 40 hip. So I tend to go for the size four. However, you do have all of the um, finished garment measurements as well. And I was looking through these and there is quite a lot of ease in this pattern. So for a size four, um, the finished garment measurements would have given a bust of 40 and a half, a waist of 38 and a hip of 45. Now, I don't mind a little bit of give and room in a pinafore because obviously you're going to be putting tights underneath or maybe leggings, um, maybe uh, like a very thin jumper or a long sleeve T-shirt or something. But just for me personally, I just found that maybe a little bit too much ease. Now, if I size down to a size three, that then, the finished garment measurements, is a 38 and a half bust, a 36 waist, and a 43 hip. And I just thought, if I'm gonna wear this, I don't want it to be too kind of, you know, like loose and straight. I'd rather it be a little bit more form-fitting. And as you may have seen from the red version, which I uh, showed you earlier, um, it is a little bit more fitted and I do like the look that that gives off. So for me personally, I did cut out the size three and it worked out perfectly. 
so entirely up to you. Um, I would probably recommend having a look on Instagram under the hashtag sewing olive and then you should be able to find a whole variety of uh, people wearing it, you know, real models um, or real life models, should I say. Um, and you can kind of see how it fits on different body shapes and things like that. And then you can kind of work out whether you want the kind of slightly looser fit or whether you want it slightly more fitted. So I hope that makes sense. So this is the size three that I've cut out. There are um, not many pieces, which is brilliant. So you've got um, the back piece. You've got uh, obviously the front piece here. And then you've got a front facing with a uh, button placket kind of already in there and then the back facing so not many pieces at all so the fabric this fabric i got from poppy bear which again i will link the website down below i do believe that they have sold out of this fabric because i did buy it um a few months ago and it was super super popular at the time and it is a needle cord again, uh, but this time uh, we've got cats and foliage and flowers and it's just gorgeous. I love this fabric and I just think the olive is gonna be perfect in this. Now I've got two meters of this lovely fabric and uh, looking at the uh, fabric requirements, on here um, it does say for sizes one to six it does require 1.7 meters of 150 centimeter wide fabric or 2.2 meters if it is 45 um, or sorry 115 centimeters wide or 45 inches um, sizes seven to ten it does recommend you have two meters worth for 150 wide fabric or 2.7 for 115 centimeter wide fabric so yeah, I've got two meters. I can't remember what the uh, width of this one is. I don't think it was a narrow. Let's just double check. No, so it is a wide one. So we are good. So that is the fabric requirements. Now, one thing that I think I am gonna do with the pattern is I am going to extend the length slightly. And you can see on here, there are some uh, lengthen and shorten lines. So what I'm gonna do is because the length and shorten line is very um, far down on the pattern, I'm just gonna cut a little bit more extra fabric on the bottom here, which is kind of what I did on my red version, but I think I only did it maybe by half an inch, an inch maybe, I can't remember. And that kind of came up at an okay length, but it was still quite short. So I think I am gonna extend it just a little bit more. I think I'm gonna do two inches because I did have a look at the book. I should have really looked at it um, beforehand, but the patterns in the book are actually drafted for someone who is about five foot five, five foot six. I'm five for eight, so no wonder it came up a tiny bit short on me, even with extending it by an inch. So I'm going to extend it by two inches, which I hope then will give the desired length that I need. I will probably be wearing it with tights and things anyway, but um, yeah, it'd be quite nice to have the option to wear it without tights, maybe in this kind of springtime as well, because it's just such a beautiful fabric. I wanna wear it all the time. I am looking at my camera and it does look a tiny bit blurry over here. So apologies for that. I don't know whether it's my lighting or whether it's, um, if you'd seen one of my other vlogs, I dropped my phone. So I don't know. I'm hoping it hasn't damaged the camera or anything, but um, yeah. So I hope that's not gonna be too distracting that it's a bit blurry, but I've just kind of noticed that now. So um, hopefully it won't uh, ruin the video. I have my lovely cup of tea here, which this time is in a little uh, thermos. Stuart made me a cup of tea this morning and he left it on my sewing table ready for when I was going to film the sew along and uh, I tend to sometimes get a bit distracted and leave like half cups and things and it gets cold so he put it in a thermos for me. How cute is that? So I've got lovely hot tea. Right so um, oh yes I forgot to mention I'm wearing um, the Grainline Studio Linden sweatshirt um, with cats on so yeah I'm having a bit of a crazy cat 
day to day with fabric um, and I got this from Flamingo Fabrics I think this one and it's lots of little cat faces and then wearing a little bow tie and then I've just teamed it up with a um, like a marl jersey kind of there French terry so yeah that's what I'm wearing so let's get on with cutting out the lovely fabric <laughs> that is all the pattern pieces now cut out you may have seen from the fast forwarding I was kind of repositioning the fabric quite a lot you know kind of like lying it down and you know checking it repositioning it and that is because we do have a directional print on this so what I try and do when I have a directional print especially one that's kind of quite busy is I try and find one kind of um image to try and replicate the whole way down i did at one point actually stop and do like a tiny little video which i will kind of insert somewhere here um so i had like a little flower and i just made sure that where the fold of the fabric was that that flower kind of matched the whole way down so um i knew that everything was as straight as it could be so i hope that makes sense but i did try and do that with all my pattern pieces so that i knew everything was um as straight as it could be so um i did also as i mentioned i lengthened the um dress by two inches and so i've done that for the main um pieces which i will show you here you can see ooh, there so i've extended that by two inches just by adding a bit on the bottom now, don't forget, if you are going to be doing the same as me and lengthening, you do want to do it on the front facing piece as well, because that's where the button packet is. Now, because I lengthened it by two inches, my fabric came up a little bit short on this particular piece because it is actually quite long. So I was a little bit short. So what I had to do is I had to um, cut it off here which was actually exactly where this um, length and shorten line is. And then I added on one centimeter on the end here. And then also for the remaining piece, I added on the two inches as well as another one centimeter. So that that means what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to sew um, those bits together with a one centimeter seam allowance so that then it becomes the one long piece as the pattern says. So again, I really hope that makes sense. Um, it does say to cut out interfacing as well. Now, because I have sewn this pattern before using needle cord, I didn't think I needed it. Um, I didn't use interfacing on my first one and I'm actually quite glad that I didn't because there is a, a bit in here where you do have to kind of um, like 
almost like a kind of burrito method of pulling things out and it was quite stiff to get out and I think if I have interfacing it's going to be very difficult. However saying that um, I'm not going to interface as I say all of it but I am going to interface just the button placket section. So you can see here you've kind of got a bit in between the length and um, and shorten lines depending on um, if you wanted to lengthen at the waist or if you want to lengthen at the bottom I'm going to cut out an interfacing piece that's just this like section here and I will put that on the fabric I'm not going to do the interfacing all of this section because as I say it's I think it's just going to be too tricky my red version is absolutely fine I didn't even do um, interfacing on the button placket but I'm just thinking, just to be on the safe side, this time I will just add that interfacing just for that button placket, just to give it the best ability possible. So yeah, that is what I'm gonna do. So my first step is I'm going to cut out just that small section of interfacing, and then I'm gonna sew up the um, front-facing additions <laughs> to put them together. Um, iron on the interfacing onto this section because that is the first step that it recommends in the book is to put your interfacing on. So once I've done that, I will come back to you. So that is my first step done. So I've attached the two pieces here. So can you see there's that seam line just there to make it the full length of the front facing. And then I've interfaced the other side um, just in between those two lines. As I mentioned before, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see exactly that, but yeah, that interfacing piece just sits between those two lines. So that means when I put the buttons on, that that bit is gonna be nicely reinforced. So now I'm gonna actually go to the book and I'm gonna find out what the next step is. So the first step, uh, we've done the interfacing. Um, I've done just that button placket, as I said, but if you want to do the full interfacing, that's entirely up to you. And then um, the next bit is to stay stitch. So I've just got to stay stitch uh, all the curved edges. So around the neck, around the armholes as well. And then once I've done that stay stitching, then it's onto the darts. So I'm gonna do the stay stitching first and then I'll come back to you about the darts. stay stitching done. So I've just sewn a line of stitches reasonably close to the edge of the fabric if you can just see that there um, and that just prevents anything from stretching out. And so the next step is the darts. Now these darts as I mentioned before are these fisheye darts Oh, that's just Bentley jumping down. Um, and what I do is I mark these on the fabric by um, these lines here. I do like little pin pricks, so to make some holes. And then I mark those with my pen, my little chalk pen. And then I kind of join it all up so that then that marking transfers onto the fabric. 
and then um, once I've pinned them together I then sew from the middle out to this side and then middle out to that side it just makes it a lot easier to do it that way so I will get on with doing that now So I've pinned my fisheye darts and I just kind of thought I would actually share with you kind of how I kind of pin them so that I kind of know, it kind of reminds me of um, how to put it through the machine. So if you can see, I'm hoping this is going to show up, you probably can see there's that pink line where I've pinned it and on one side I've put pins down uh, this way so that when I put it through the machine I know that that's the way I should go. But then if I flip it round the other way, I've got the other side um, pins on the reverse. So then I know again to push the machine, uh, to put the fabric through that way. So then that means I know that I'm going to get the ends either side. I really hope that kind of makes sense with it. I mean, you can pin it however you like. I just find that way is a bit easier because then it kind of reminds me not to sew across the whole thing. Um, but yeah, that's my little method. So I'm going to get sewing those darts and then I think I'll just work out um, which way I need to press them and then I'll come back to you. that's the darts sewn and pressed and the pressing was towards the center so the two back ones towards the center and the two uh, front ones towards the center so you can see those if I show you the back piece you'll probably see those darts there you might not be able to tell from that side that those are done so the next step is to join the bodices so uh, the front to the back at the shoulders and at the sides um, she has put a quick tip in here which is brilliant saying there's no need to finish the shoulder seam allowances as they'll be covered by the facing later so I love that I've said before I love it when people tell me when I should and shouldn't finish edges so the shoulder seams I'm just going to stitch up and then the side seams I'm going to sew and then overlock those so I'll get on with that now. I've worked out the fuzziness. <laughs> I had one of those screen protectors on my phone um, after I dropped it and everything. I replaced the screen cover and yeah, I think it was just hovering over the camera a little bit. So now we don't have any blurriness. So apologies for the earlier part of the video, but hopefully now it should be a lot better. <laughs> Oh, 
rookie error. <laughs> I've put the wrong piece on the on the front. So this is the um, the armhole piece, but I've actually sewn the front bit here onto the armhole. Very clever of me. Uh, so I'll unpick that and do that again. But yes, top tip check the front pieces are on the right bit. <laughs> possible that maybe one of my sew alongs I won't have to unpick something <laughs> yeah I'm keeping it real because I'm sure everyone else has to unpick stuff quite a lot or at least I'm hoping so <laughs> anyway that is done so I've done the shoulders um, stitched those but not overlocked them and then the side seams I've stitched and then I have also overlocked there as well so that I get a nice clean finish so yeah it is looking really nice so far and uh, yes yeah, so I'm very happy with it there it's got a nice little shell so now the next step let's see it is uh, construct the facing so it's exactly the same um, on those so you show you sew the shoulders and then just the, those little side bits um, and then it wants you to overlock all around it. So let me sew up those bits and then I will come back to you. surprise I've just had a friend pop over and give me some brownies <laughs> I made her and her husband um, a couple of face masks each and uh, as a little thank you they gave me some brownies so uh, yeah can't wait to eat some of those with my cup of tea <laughs> Bentley's decided to uh, come say hello <laughs> um, so yes I have um, finished the facing pieces now so they are all sewn up and I've also overlocked the edges of those as well. I haven't overlocked any of the shoulder seams or the side seams of the facing because they are going to be um, on the inside of the uh, dress, kind of like as a, because it's a facing. So I now have got to attach um, these facing pieces to the main dress um, which is all around the neck and then down the front of the button placket so I'm going to sew that together now and then I'll uh, come back to you
so I have sewn the facing onto the main part of the dress so if you can see that there so we've got right sides together um, so I've sewn all around and then the next step is to so we've got to trim the seam allowances but we're grading them so um, it's just saying just the facing piece so it's just this bit um, is the bit that you're trimming the seam allowance you're leaving this side as is you're just trimming this um, facing piece this seam allowance so you trim that down and then you're going to then turn the facing out and then under stitch um, there as well so everything is nice and flat so um, yeah I'm gonna do that bit now So I hope this might show it a little bit more clearly. So you can see there the facing piece has been trimmed, but then this side has been left as is. You can see that there. And then to understitch, so you're going to fold this piece back, but the um, seam allowance, you're gonna to push towards the outside and then you're going to stitch along here. Now in the book, it does say to stitch this side. I tend to stitch from this side just because that's what I tend to do. And then I can kind of feel where that edge is just because I want to make sure I get that straight line um, perfect on there. So yeah, so you just need to make sure that this seam allowance part is facing towards the um, outside. So I'll get on and do that now. So that is all the under stitching completed um, it doesn't say to start uh, pressing anything yet because the next step is to um, attach the facing uh, kind of as a kind of all-in-one method so what I'm going to do is I am going to leave it there for today because it is just gone five I thought I might be able to finish this actually in one day but yeah I've been kind of doing other little bits and bobs and then I'll have some visitors and things. So I'm going to leave that for today and pick it up with you tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, welcome to day two of the Olive Sew Along. So I left you yesterday where I had just got to uh, the facing where I have installed that. Um, so we do have the main dress now constructed, but we still have um, the raw edges on the armholes. So now it is actually doing the um, all-in-one facing method. So um, Tilly does have some instructions on her website, um, which has like a video, which I will link in the description box below if you want to have a look, because this bit I would say is probably the most tricky bit of the construction. I will try and um, do some close ups and things as much as I can to show you. Um, so hopefully that will be a little bit clear. So, yeah, the next step is to get this all in one facing method done, which I will do now. OK, so I'm going to try doing something a little bit different here and I'm going to try and show you the all in one facing method a little bit more close up. So I've just positioned my camera kind of down. So I'm hoping this angle is going to be all right. So we'll see how we get on. But as you can see, I've laid the dress down flat. And what I've done is I've made sure that the facing is all lined up with the dress. 
So you can see that this is the main part of the dress and then this is the corresponding facing bit. And again, the same with the back. So you've got the facing and the main part of the dress. So it's all lined up. So that's the first step. So to get the all-in-one facing, what we need to do first is you get your outer part of the dress. So this is the front section. And then what you wanna do is you wanna fold a bit of that fabric over, like so. And then that corresponding facing section, you also wanna fold that one as well. So you're doing it like you're creating a little seam. And then you're gonna sandwich that together like that. Now what you're gonna do now is you're gonna make sure that you hold that with one hand and pinch that, make sure you keep that nice and secure. And then with your other hand, you're gonna go under the facing and try and grab those little bits of fabric that you have sandwiched. So I'm gonna go under my dress here, under the facing until I can find those two bits that I have pinched together. Okay, so I can feel that I've got those now. So now what you wanna do is let go with this hand, make sure you keep your hand pinched for those seams, and then you're going to kind of almost like unfold it. So you're gonna turn the dress, keep that there, and then you see that I've still got my fingers pinched on those seams. And you're kind of wanting to bring those to the surface. So you can see there, that is the bit that I have pinched. Now, first off, before I do anything, I'm gonna make sure that they are kind of lined up correctly. And I'm going to put a pin in place. So then I know that bit I know is at least correct. <laughs> so now what you need to try and do is just kind of unfold little bits of the fabric to try and get up to the shoulder section. So you will need to kind of maneuver it around a little bit and pull some of the fabric out until you can find that. So it does sometimes help to kind of pin as you go. And I would recommend quite a lot of pins for that bit. And then you go all the way down until you find your lower arm seam on both sides. Put those together. So basically you are left with this sort of shape and you need to sew from the lower arm seam and all the way up to the top of the shoulder seam. So as you can see, it's very bunched up. So you probably need to try and maneuver um, your machine as much as possible to make sure that you don't catch any of the fabric that's sitting underneath. So just make sure you take your time with it and you try and get this as flat as possible and try not to catch any fabric. So just be a little bit careful of that. And then I'm gonna sew that across now and then I'll come back to you to show you what it's like when you turn it out. Okay, so I've got my sewing machine out now and so that is the shape. And uh, as I say, I'm gonna start sewing from this side and going all the way along to the top. And again, just make sure that you're trying to have it as flat as possible along the machine and that none of the uh, fabric on the inside gets caught up in any of your stitching. So you just want to try and maybe kind of use some of the little holes on either side just to kind of make sure that you can kind of push any fabric kind of out the way that might be sitting in this channel. So I'm going to get uh, sewing that now.
Right, so the moment of truth, let me just cut off these loose threads. Okay, so that is all sewn. So I'm hoping that I haven't caught any fabric, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so now if I pull it out, Oh, I think we might actually, we might be okay. So yeah, it does need a good press, but you can see that is the outside and then that is the inside. So you can now see that you've got um, an all-in-one facing on the front section. So now we need to do exactly the same on this back section. So fold each bit of fabric over, pinch it, grab it through and pull it out. So I really hope that that helps in that section. If it's not clear, don't worry, I won't be offended because I know it's a bit of a tricky section. But as I say, I will link uh, Tilly's uh, Tilly and the Buttons video down below in the description box. That one I think is quite clear, probably a little bit better than mine, but um, yeah, it's there if you need it. Okay, so I'm going to sew the other bits and then I will come back to you. My friend's brownies from yesterday are so good. I love brownies. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> So the all-in-one facing method is completed now, you can see there. Um, it still does look a little bit bunched up, but that's because now the next step is to do some edge stitching around that as well. You won't be able to get all the way up to the shoulder, um, but it just says in the book to go as far as you can. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then I should be able to give it a nice press and then um, I will show you that afterwards. edge stitching as I can so now it's time to give it one really good press. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually press this in the other room with my big ironing board rather than my little tabletop one just because I want to um, make sure that I get all the uh, facing down the front nicely ironed as well so I'll come back to you once I've done that to then go through the next step. So I've tried it on after pressing so you can see Kind of what it looks like i've just pinned it at the front and i love it i mean it's a bit crazy the print and the print together but uh, yeah it's lovely i'm really happy with it 
So when pressing, I do find um, a point turner is really good for getting these corners at the top really nice and crisp and also helping with any of the shoulder bits and also a tailor's ham. I mean, it's so useful for doing all of these um, armholes. I don't know where I'd be without one of these, but as you can see there, you get a lovely clean finish if you use the tailor's ham to drape the fabric over and then iron over the top. So I do recommend if you don't have one of these, definitely get one. Um, so the next step is just to secure the facing on the inside. So it does say just to do some stitching at the top, like stitching the ditch on the top of the armholes. I probably am also going to tack the bits at the bottom, um, just do some hand stitches just at the side just to keep that in. And then it is on to the hem. So I'm going to just get all everything secured with the facing and then I'll come back to you to talk to you about the hem. facing now secured in place so it's not going to go anywhere you're not going to have bits of the underarm kind of poking out or anything like that so it just gives it a really really nice clean finish I really like it so now we're moving on to the actual hemming so uh, in the book Tilly does actually show you how to do quite a nice clean finish hem so my next job is to all along the hem I'm going to overlock all of this hem so it's got a nice finish and then what she recommends is the facing piece on the front so that kind of button placket right at the bottom she recommends that you turn that kind of um, right sides together and then once you've um, done that you then stitch um, an inch uh, above the hem cut off the excess just of the facing piece so that then what you can do is you can then turn it in um, with a point turner and you get a nice clean edge and you just don't have to you know just fold up like a normal hem it gives it quite a nice clean finish so I'm going to overlock I'm going to get to the point of where I've stitched and cut the facing piece and then I'll kind of show you that kind of finish which she was talking about so I'll get back to you in a bit I have now overlocked all of the bottom of the hem and I will just show you this section here where you can see that I have put the facing piece towards the front so um, right sides together and then I've sewn across here which is an inch from the bottom and then I've cut away this excess uh, fabric from the facing but left the main fabric here and now if I use my point turner if I unfold or kind of turn out, if you will, um, this corner and I'll just point that out. And then what you'll see there is that you've got a lovely clean edge. And then on the inside, you've almost kind of got a ready uh, kind of hemline because it's all kind of tucked in and it looks nice and neat on the inside as well. So now the next step is to actually uh, press the hem um, all the way along, get it pinned and then stitch across. So that's my next job, I'll do that and then I'll come back to you. So that bit is done. So we've got a lovely machine finished hem there. So that is all lovely and neat. So we are just literally now onto the finishing touches, which is going to be um, the buttons down the front. 
Now I am using some snacks and these ones are kind of like metal ones. Uh, they come in a variety of the colours. They have um, silver and these sort of bronzy kind of ones. And I'm going to go for kind of like the bronzy colour because I think that'll go quite nicely with the fabric. I haven't used these actually since I did my red version. So I am just going to do a little practice, uh, practice run just to make sure that I don't mess up anything on my main fabric. Um, and also I want to make sure I put in a clothing label as well because I do like putting in labels every now and again. So I'm just going to put one on the facing piece here. Um, I've got this lovely little box that um, a friend made me and uh, it's all kind of like glittery on the top. It's gorgeous. And um, I've got all my little uh, labels in there. And um, I think the one I'm going to pick, yeah, and no, I think I will go for this one. I'm going to go for one of the Kylie and the Machine ones, which is me made. So I'm going to pop that on the facing, probably just, yeah, somewhere dead in the centre. And uh, yeah, that'll make it just look a little bit nice and give a nice little finish. So I'm going to put that label in. I'm going to do a practice run on those snaps before I do anything with the finished garment. And then fingers crossed, it'll then all be done. <laughs> okay, I'll check in with you in a little bit. my poppers went in really well this is an absolute brilliant little kit if anyone is interested in this I will actually link uh, to the video of where I found these and it's from Andrea from beyond the pink door uh, she recommended these snaps and um, I watched her video as a kind of like a little tutorial on how to use them initially and yeah, these are brilliant. So I'm going to link down to her video so that you can find out all about these if you want. But they're brilliant. They all went in very smoothly. And um, you may have seen that I actually used my old, or my old, <laughs> it's not old, um, my, my red version to see where the um, buttonholes lined up. Because I think my pattern piece, I'm not sure if I forgot to add some of the buttonhole placements on there. Um, but I knew that the red one had exactly where I wanted the button placements to go. And I must admit, I didn't actually account for the interfacing this high up. I've interfaced, I think, more or less from like here downwards. So I haven't actually interfaced this top bit. So if you are going to do that trick that I did at the beginning of where you just want to interface the button placket, let me just grab the pattern piece. So as you can see here, I said that I was going to interface between these two bits because can you see there, that's where my buttonholes are. But I've actually missed the buttonholes on this bit. I mean, really silly of me. I mean, it's ridiculously obvious, but hey. So if I 
put that up there. In theory, I should have actually done my interfacing from here down to this line. So you never know. I love this pattern. I might make another one. I haven't interfaced at all the button placket on the red one. I've worn it loads. It's been absolutely fine. So I'm hoping it's going to be the same for this one. I really like how this turned out. I love this pinafore. It's so pretty. I mean, I haven't obviously got the uh, the right top underneath here. Um, but yeah, if you are interested, then this is a lovely pattern. I think that if you are an advanced beginner, it would be absolutely fine. The most trickiest bit, as I say, is doing this all in one facing bit. But once you get the hang of it, and if you watch a video like Tilly's um, one, or if you manage to follow mine, um, then it's really straightforward. And working with needle cord for this pattern, I have to admit, it's so, so good. This ironed really well. You don't have to kind of worry too much about kind of, um, you know, like with velvet or a thicker jumbo cord, you might have to be very careful of like the nap and kind of, you know, iron it with towels and things like that. This ironed absolutely fine. You just have to make sure you do kind of a medium to low iron. It pressed beautifully. It was so nice to work with. I love this so, so much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get changed into something maybe a little bit more appropriate for this, do some little twirls and everything so you can see it head to toe. And if you enjoyed this so along, then please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, then please do. I will probably see you in the next couple of weeks to discuss what I'm going to be doing in my November plans, in which case then you can vote for your next sew along. So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, then pop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer questions and things as best as I can. I mean, I do a sew along. It's by no means a tutorial. You know, I'm not an advanced sewer. I'm just kind of sewing this with you there. I hope I've kept you company maybe while you're doing your sewing. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.